Welcome to another episode of Biblical Manhood. Our trait today is faith in action. And uh, our text, we're going to go into the New Testament that talks about the Old Testament. So we've done Adam, we've done Noah, and now we're going to do Abraham, or Abram is how they called yeah. it back in the day. Uh, but Hebrews is kind of an exposition of faith. Hebrews 11 is that big faith chapter where we talk about what faith is, what does it look like, and they give a bunch of examples from the Old Testament um, of, of what faith is. And so... The hall of faith. The hall of faith. That's right. That's exactly right. So chapter 11, verse 8, begins with Abraham. And it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And so right off the bat, we, we know Abraham as a man of faith. Now, this is not to say that, that women don't have faith or when men only have faith, but I think this is an area where men uh, struggle. And so a counterpoint to our faithlessness as men is to recognize that that is a good character trait for men to have is, is, a, is faith. Yeah. Um, and in this passage, you've brought out a couple of things as we've been talking. Uh, what, what faith looks like in Abraham? What does faith in action look like for Abraham? Um, I think the, the text does a really good job of really making your bullet points for you. So yeah. uh, verse 8, it's by faith Abraham obeyed or, or went. So by faith he went. Um, verse 9, by faith he stayed. And then the third point down a little further in 17 is by faith Abraham offered. He offered up Isaac. So those are all action. Those are all action um, traits. So it's not a... It's not a blind faith. It's a it's a active obedience in faith. Um, I mean, he demonstrated his faith um, in multiple different ways, and there's plenty of people we could talk about on faith. But Abraham is the next person in line. Plus, he's just the the pillar of faith, you know. Um, so, I mean, he uh, he obeyed God's instruction, and I'm thinking of how hard that would have been for him. Um, he's most likely comfortable where he was at when God called him out. Uh, and then he was called to leave and he didn't argue. The text doesn't show him arguing or complaining about it. He, he went um, right away. Uh, so that's... And think about this, Ryan. I mean, he, so he, he is established in his homeland and God says, go to this land that I will show you. He doesn't even tell him where he's going. Right. And if you think about it, as a man, what... What are we called to do? Well, to provide, right? Provide for our families, to give them security, to do all that we can. Yet God has specifically called Abraham out of his comfort zone, out of his homeland, um, and says, go. And Abraham could have said, well, I can't go. My responsibility as a husband is to uh, yeah. protect or to, 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 to live this life. But instead, he submits to God's word, and, and he goes, yeah, and, and by faith, I mean, it really, he believed that what he was leaving behind or, or losing or what he might miss out on, he, he believed that God was able and going to more than make up for, for what he was called to leave behind. Yeah, yeah, so, so by faith, the faith in action looks like going, right? So how can we translate that into to us as, as husbands and fathers and, and men in general? Uh, what does it look like to have faith in action and and go? Um, I, I have some just some personal um, examples just in my life of what that looked like. Um, I have a past that I'm less than proud of, um, and it it was it really was contradictory to God's word. Um, so there was no question that I had to leave that behind. Um, but it it wasn't even it wasn't easy for me to do that. Um, and you had said something in your sermon on Sunday that said that um, oftentimes in obedience or in faith, um, we're bringing people along with us on our journey. And that was, that was true for Abraham. Um, 
and, and it's shown in my life. Um, submitting to God's word and, and his authority, leaving behind the past life that I had my family involved with and, and a part of. And now my daughters are being raised up in, in godly ways and bringing them along on that journey. I, I have a five-year-old that's probably got more scripture than I do memorized. Right. Um, right. And, it's, and that's all from just obedience and, and really in faith um, going. Yeah, so, so um, taking active steps, right? Uh, walking out what we believe the Word of God says. Uh, so when we read in Scripture to uh, die to ourselves, take up our cross and follow Christ, um, that, there's an active nature in this, uh, an active level of obedience that we yeah. must follow. Um, <clears throat> but we also see something else, right? So we have Him going. Yeah. But in verse 9, we see the opposite, right? What happens there? Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's staying. By faith, he stays. Um, he doesn't... He, he, there's no doubt that the, where he stayed in the land that was promised to him is, an, at this time, a very ungodly, immoral place to live. So he's leaving a pagan lifestyle, and then he's being asked to leave all that stuff behind, now go live in tents, um, and live in this land that, that I will give to your descendants. Um, and he, living in the tents as he, as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So he's living, staying um, in this area and not even looking at the immediate place. He's got his eyes looking forward to the promise, uh, which would have had to have been difficult. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're living in a pagan land, full of, surrounded by people who, uh, in all likelihood, probably hate you. Yeah. Um, not participating in their sacrifices and their worship. And um, when, I, when I think about a principle that we can derive from this for, for faith in action, is sometimes faith in action means going, uh, fleeing or leaving uh, a situation. Other times it means staying. Uh, and we and we see this in our lives. You know, sometimes it means we we leave that terrible job uh, that is really bringing us down, uh, but we leave in faith uh, for something that God has called us to. Yeah. Or other times it means we stay in that terrible job. Um, we're doing the opposite of fear, right? We're not we're not running away from the situation Making in fear. Irrational decisions. Irrational, yeah. yeah. So um, how do we act in trust? in the one who gives the word, right, yeah. into the living God. And that's for Abraham. Abraham didn't really know God um, initially when he was called, right? He, the, it basically just says God spoke to Abraham yeah. and said, go. Yeah. Um, and then later he shows himself and we, we see a relationship developed. But ultimately, there is a, a going and there is a staying, both of which is in, in faith. Yeah. So faith in action could look like fleeing or going, um, as we are called to do. Other times, faith in action means we stay. Yeah. And it's, um, so going is, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to go and, and step out in faith and go accomplish something, but it, it's, it's even harder or more difficult at times, um, for me at least, to stay in a position where you're not necessarily happy or you don't think that it's where you need to be right now, um, but there's really no other doors open. Right, you know, at that time, so it's it's a time to stay, and and it's hard to live content with that. Uh, it's it's easy to run and flee back to old ways that you know could um, prosper you temporarily, financially, um, or you know, leaning on your own kind of understanding, if you will. And, and not every door that opens is a uh, a providential. Right. door that yeah. we should we should jump into right? yeah. um, I think about uh, the Philippian jail Paul and Silas are in jail chained up in the bottommost pit singing songs yeah. and hymns to God and an earthquake happens and the doors fly open and everybody gets released and yet they stay there yeah. right why do they stay in prison uh, the door is open yeah. right God must want me to be free <laughs> right. Right? Uh, instead they stay and it's an opportunity for them to share the gospel yeah. with the Philippian jailer. And ultimately, spread, um, uh, build a church yeah. in, in Philippi. And so we have those two things. So we have, uh, by, by faith, he stayed, or he went. By faith, he stayed. Yeah. 
And then we have this other um, thing, by faith he offered. Right. So verse 17 has Abraham again, and it says, by faith Abraham. Go ahead. Um, so 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He received the promise, and yet he was offering his one and only son. Man, you put yourself in, in Abraham's <laughs> shoes at this point. He's he's waited his whole life, you know, for a hundred years to have a have a son. He's yeah. promised to his seed will will be as numerous as the stars, and he's finally got his son of promise. That's right. And now he's asked to give it up. Um, what would you? I mean, that would you would be questioning some things, right? Like, what what the heck is going on here? Um, I finally got my promise, and now I'm giving it up. Uh, and it's not, it's not so much that he believed that God would replace Isaac. He would, he considered, if we look down to 19, he considered God to be able even to raise someone from the dead. Yeah. So he knew in obedience, if he were to do this, God would provide Isaac, or Isaac um, resurrected. God will still keep his promises. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, I just, offering up the son of promise, that would be. That would be the hard part. Right. You, you get the position in ministry or, um, or you know, whatever is you're striving for, um, godly aspirations, and then you're asked to give it up. Or it, the willingness. You need to be willing to give that up. Right. Yeah, and, and from a, a earthly, humanly perspective, right, that would be un, unimaginable. Un, unachievable. Unachievable, yeah. unimaginable, or, uh, or ridiculous. Yeah. Yet... For some reason, God uses moments like that to display his greatness. Uh, so faith in action means that we, uh, that we go or we stay or we offer up what we think earthly in our own reasoning yeah. to be the superior good for what God's word says. Now, this is really an area where people can get um, mystical. Right. And, uh, well, God told me, um, I heard his voice, uh, I have this strong impression. Uh, what are some other things you have heard? Uh, the, the biggest thing is, is God told me, or I, I felt it, my, uh, felt it in my heart or. Yeah. I had a burning in my bosom or this, or still small voice. Right. And, and that's not what we're saying. Uh, what we're saying is. Scripture is very clear into what obedience uh, looks like, what faith looks like, and it's to follow the revealed will of God. Um, Why would we want anything subjective? And so for us, what this faith looks like, now here's the thing with Abraham. Um, He's he's set out as this paradigm of faith, yet he fails, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, in fact, when this Sunday we're going to be preaching on an area where Abraham fails, yeah. uh, he lies, he's deceptive instead of trusting in God. Right. So, uh, um, Calvin in, in his commentary on Hebrews, he says, Abraham himself had no excellency, which did not proceed from faith. Right. And we really see that. So he, he displayed his faith in, in these three specific ways that we're addressing today, but this by no means... Um, made him um, the answer or the hope or the even the model to follow. I mean, he when he was faced with fear, um, he, he had a inclination to lie or to manipulate. Yeah, and that, and that's a tendency for us all. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, we cheat on our taxes, not because we wake up one morning and say, man, it'd be fun to cheat on my right. taxes. It's out right? of fear. It's out of fear, yeah. right? I can't pay my bills or we don't know what's going to happen. So... Um, Christ is, of course, the perfect example of what active faith looks like. Uh, his, his active obedience and his passive obedience are imputed to us. And we see this, I think, really clearly in 1 Peter. And remember, the, the, the book of, of Peter, or Peter, is writing to uh, Christians who are suffering, who are, who are struggling with this, this, uh, this oppression by uh, Rome and um, are being uh, murdered. And he says this, uh, right after talking about slaves and masters, in verse 21, he says, For you were called to this, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his steps. He did not commit sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. 
When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you are like sheep going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. Now that last bit, I just kind of I can't read this section can't without stop, yeah. I can't stop there uh, <laughs> without hitting that. But ultimately, it says that he did not insult or um, he, but he suffered by entrusting himself to the one who judges justly. Uh, he he trusted God uh, to handle the situation, and and Jesus is the paradigm, the example for us and how to live our lives in faith. So as uh, as husbands, as dads. As men who want to be um, to be men, uh, we need to live out of faith, active faith, right. not passive faith, um, though that is beneficial, right? A, a simply trusting in yeah. the Lord, but this active faith uh, looks like going, staying, or even offering up what we think is a better opportunity for the glory of God. Uh, and that's what mis- missionaries do, right? They, they leave everything in America behind to go to the, the field. And that's actually one of the things that I had written down just in my thoughts was um, the past that, that I have that, that I'm not proud of. It was it was difficult for me to leave that and, and not go back to it at times when I, out of fear. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking about people that are living um, productive lives in society and even God honoring lives. They're involved in their church. They're doing great things here, raising their family, but God calls them to the mission field. How much more difficult that would be to leave that behind, knowing that you're, you're leading a godly life in in a God honoring way. Um, but to go out in faith, that would be, I think, more difficult at times, which I I had talked to to your mom about that, um, her having done that. Um, and it's just, uh, perspective kind of shift there so it's really an honorable thing so the question remains how are you living in active faith uh are you is god calling you to um to be actively going to be staying or to be offering up what you think is a better thing according to his revealed will uh so until next time we'll talk to you all later